There are only four kinds of apps that you should ever use to help you learn a foreign language, but these four language apps actually work and can help you become fluent faster, while everything else you should just mercilessly delete. So if you're learning a new language and you want to make sure that your phone is actually helping you become fluent, then this is going to be an important video. If you're new here then welcome my name is ollie richards and this channel is all about helping you learn a new language quickly through the power of story so that you can become fluent faster and live your best life so what are these four kinds of apps well type number one is what i call content apps and a content app is one is an app that gives you direct access to real content in the language that you're learning right there on your phone which means you can spend time immersed in the language sounds easy now with the internet but this wasn't always the case when I first started learning French back in, in the last millennium, I remember being desperate to get my hands on French material. And, but back then, the only way you could do that was to go to a bookshop, you know, a language bookshop, which not many of them, or buy a French newspaper, or go to Blockbuster and rent a, rent a French film. Uh, it was really hard. And in my case, I actually ended up going to the extreme of moving to Paris in order just to get some immersion in French. But in the last 20 years, things have changed massively, luckily. And now all content is produced on the internet, which means you can just access it directly. And uh, content apps help you do that. It's a bit like having the wardrobe from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, like right there in your bedroom, a real version that you can open and walk through and turn up immediately in the country of the language that you're learning so that you can be immersed in the language. So content apps, they are not teaching apps. It's not like a textbook where you learn step by step. These apps simply facilitate you spending time with content in the language, immersing yourself in the language. Recommendations for content apps, you are literally spoiled for choice because every media outlet in the world now has, has its own app that you can just download, usually for free and read or listen to their content for free. So back in the day, uh, I had to buy Le Monde, the French newspaper to read, but now I can just download Le Monde's app and read stuff right there on my phone whenever I want. Blogs are another great source of content to read because they're written in a more casual way. So you could download the Medium app and browse blog posts uh, in the language that you're learning. I'm a big fan of the Link app as well, where you can actually import content that you find from various places around the internet and then study it there on your phone. But you should also not forget simple apps that everybody knows, like the Kindle app and your podcast app, because these are all apps that just give you direct access to content so that you can spend your time immersed in the language. Type number two of language apps that actually work are language exchange apps. And what language exchange apps do is they give you access to native speakers of the language that you're learning so that you can practice it. You can literally find people like a big kind of community, start talking to them and then practice the language with real people. I first discovered language exchange apps in one of the kind of weirdest projects that I've done, which was when I was living in the Middle East in Qatar, but I was learning Cantonese, which is the language of Hong Kong. And there I was, I knew that I had to speak it somehow, but there's not many Cantonese speaking people in Qatar. So I was thinking, well, how am I ever going to practice speaking? But luckily at the time, language exchange apps had just started to appear. So I was able to actually search for, for people in Hong Kong from my phone and then actually start to communicate with them through text, through voice notes, through things like that. And this gave me basically a year and a half's worth of, of speaking practice, communication practice that I wouldn't have been able to have otherwise. So it's really priceless. It's just like being able to teleport yourself to any country at any time to meet people and hang out with them and practice. And it's so convenient just being on your phone. So just like with content apps, language exchange apps are not changing the game of language learning here. What they're doing is they're facilitating you. They're helping you connect with native speakers. As for recommendations, I've really enjoyed the Tandem app and the Hello Talk app. They've both been great for me in the past to connect with speakers of different languages that I've been learning. And the best thing about these apps is at least to get started, they're usually free because they really rely on the network and community of people within the app to be successful. And if you've taken anything useful from this video so far, please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell as well so I can send you future videos. The third type of app is a game changer in the sense that it really does change how you can learn and help you learn faster. And so type number three of language apps that actually work are flashcard apps. And flashcard apps help you learn vocabulary faster because learning vocabulary in a new language is a huge task. You've got thousands of words to learn. And so to do this, it's super important that you spend your time only on vocabulary that you haven't learnt yet. It's a huge waste of time to go back and spend time reviewing things that you already know. Learning vocabulary is a task of organising your time over many months 
and many, many years. And pen and paper just isn't efficient enough to do this. But flashcards can make the whole game a lot easier. And I first discovered this when I was learning Japanese. And I would study, I would write lots of things in my notebooks. New words would always get written down in a notebook. But I realized after I'd filled up like 20 notebooks, I never went back and actually reviewed the stuff that I'd written because it was just a massive hodgepodge of different things. And so when I discovered Flashcard apps, that really was a game changer. Flashcard apps have something called spaced repetition. And what spaced repetition does is it brings back words that you know or you don't know at the right time for you. So if you tell the app, hey, I know this word, it won't bring it back. But if you tell the app, oh, I, I can't really remember this word, it will bring it back again for you in 15 minutes. And what this means is you're only spending your time studying vocabulary that you haven't learned yet. So it makes the whole process of learning much more efficient. It's a little bit like driving with GPS. It's not as fun, but it gets you there in the fastest possible way. And so flashcards, flashcard apps are one of these rare cases where technology really does make learning better. The app that I've always used and enjoyed is Flashcards Deluxe and is a very cheap app. The reason I like it is because it's very unpretentious. It's quite simple, but very powerful, and it really works, and it's really nice to use, and I have a feeling that I'm in control when I'm using this app. Other people really like the Anki app. Uh, there's also Quizlet, which is quite popular, but it's worth doing a bit of research to see what new apps are out there. The most important thing is that you choose a flashcard app that has spaced repetition, because that's the technology that brings back words that you don't know so you can learn them faster. The fourth and final type of language app that actually works and you should use is apps to learn difficult scripts. So for example, if you're learning Chinese characters or if you're learning Japanese, then you've got thousands of characters to learn and an app can really help here. You know, I like to think of language learning as a whole as an art form. And this is why technology on the whole doesn't do a great deal for language learning. It doesn't change the game. But when it comes to learning scripts, it's basically a game of brute force. You just have to sit down and memorize everything uh, until you've learned it. And that's why the app can help with the organization process. It's a bit like having a personal trainer in the gym, someone who's going to spot your weaknesses and then force you to fix them rather than just let you kind of just get just carry on exercising in the wrong way for weeks, months, or even years in a row. So if you're learning a language with a difficult script, then there's no need to suffer in silence. A character or script app can really help you make it through that long, hard slog. In terms of recommendations, there really is only one app for, for Chinese characters or for Japanese, which I used and, and was the godfather of apps, certainly at the time, and that was Scritter. And Scritter has a really fantastic interface that mimics, mimics writing, lots of space repetition built in. But now here's the important bit. If you have language learning apps on your phone or on your tablet that don't fit into the category of content, language exchange, flashcards, or learning the script, then you should delete them right away. And in case you're wondering why so extreme, you know, what about all the many thousands of apps out there? Well, you need to watch this video where you'll learn why it's so important that you get rid of these apps and also who is responsible. And I'll give you a clue. It's a character called the app villain. The temptation is always to think new technology always improves everything, but in my experience, that is dangerous thinking. So go and watch this video now and you'll find out why that is the case.